It is ice cold because you guys are not here. We need the audience. We need you. We love you. We miss you. But we are just grateful that we know that our words have got the power to just come into your living room and start transforming the situation around you. And Anton, I actually just want to start before we, we start um, officially just to say thank you, Jesus, because we have really received since last week so many feedback of miracles that the Lord has done that I actually want to start crying because the God has just been so faithful. Um, Last week, Sunday, in our second service, we were praying for a couple, and um, I prophesied to them, and I said, God is going to give you a car. Um, it's, a, it's friends of ours from Paul, and they came just to come and visit us, and we prophesied that. And on Tuesday, she received the phone call, and she received the car. And we just say, thank you, Jesus. This is the Lord that we serve, that where there is no possibility, God will make a way. And I want to say to you, this is only one of the miracles. I'm, I'm still going to share more of the miracles that the Lord has done. Even one of our other friends, she's been with us for four years. She was contending for a new position and she was praying and we were both praying with her and saying, please, Lord, this is the season. We prophesied over it. And every time she would come back to us and say, when, when, when? And she's also one of our prophets. And we said, now is the season and ho and below. On Monday morning, she received a phone call and she received that promotion and she received a new position at a university. And it's really something that she's been contending for for many years. And we just want to give the Lord all the Amen. honor. Amen. And it's really the season of suddenlies. And I just see it in other people's lives all around us. That there's, there's just, it's not the one prayer given us, whoever it's praying with them but it's a set time where Amen. that last prayer just causes the bowls, bowls to, tip. to tip that Amen. last Amen. decree just coming to to push over the bowls in heaven of all the prayers that has gone up including your prayers yes. and i just i just i've been reminded of the word of the lord that says breakthrough will spring forth speedily in and jesus i just saw name. this week how, how how it breakthrough in people's lives as the testimony comes testimonies comes in that there's a springing forth speedily, and I say, oh, wow, my goodness, Lord, what about, uh, what about us? What about the others, Lord? So this has been, yeah, very fast breakthroughs, and I'm um, saying, Lord, we receive it for us and for the others. So your yes. time is here, and don't give up because God is busy doing something amazing and supernatural, and I just see that suddenly and, and swiftly things are coming to pass in people's Amen. lives. Because this is the season. This mm. is really the season that the Lord wants to break in suddenly. And I actually want to encourage you. Um, last week we went away for um, a couple of days. And both we were standing there saying, Yuh, it would be nice to go um, for a couple of days during the school holiday to this place. So we phoned them and they said, no, sorry, you can't come. Uh, we're already fully booked. And I said to Anton, give me your hand. And he said, we decree in Jesus' name. And we shift these people out. We pray that something great will happen to them, that they can't come to this place anymore because, Lord, we need the rest. And so we both stood in agreement and we started decreeing and we said, Lord, we thank you now that when we speak to this lady again, she will phone us with good news. And guess what? Yes, you're right. She phoned us not even two days later to say she doesn't know what happened, but these people decided to move their dates because they can't make it right now. So, whoa, this place for the two yeah, of you. Yeah. We so we just quite, said, we did not quite let ship them out. <laughs> no, no, no. But we said, Lord, we really want to come. So yes, if there's yes. any way we can do like a divine substitution or a divine trade off, that would really be awesome. And guess what? The Lord did it. And um, it's just a season where your prayers, you just pray a prayer and suddenly the Lord, uh, break the, in. Yeah, the Lord breaks in. So I'm just reminded, I'm just so reminded of, of the season that we are in. And, and after such a long waiting and such a long delays that people have been contending for, I just see suddenly all around us, just the word of God manifesting quickly and swiftly. So that's really amazing. And I want to release that faith and that hope into your heart as you tune in. And as you listen tonight, we've got an amazing word of the Lord. There's the impartation happening over the airwaves. And um, Kari, we're going to just do a short worship session, about uh, two songs, I think. Not, a, not long, so don't go away. Don't go and sleep. Don't sleep on us. I know it's cold, but put off the heater, and the Holy Spirit's going to warm you. Amen. And uh, we're going to just praise and worship quickly, and then we're going to be back with amazing, fresh words, for fresh words from heaven. Amen. We're just going to pray and dedicate the session to you tonight. 
I thank you, Father, that we are in a new season, Father, where there's no walls in the Spirit. There's no limitations in the Spirit. So, Father, tonight in the power of the Holy Ghost, we release, Lord, your anointing into the homes of people that are watching. To our, our Kingdom GPS family, to those who are watching that has could be con that has been connected tonight to this to this um to, to this service, I prophesy a supernatural release of the power of the Holy Spirit right now, wherever you are, in your living room, in your bed, wherever you are right now. I prophesy the power of the Holy Spirit to be released upon you. Father, release the whirlwind of the Holy Spirit around the people that are sitting there. Let the angels flood into their, into their homes as they connect their faith tonight with what you want to release. Father, let there be a supernatural impartation, Father, into the hearts and to the minds of people tonight listening. Lord, I thank you for a shift and a change tonight. Thank you, Father, that you're releasing an anointing tonight to shift impossibility, that you're turning things around. I thank you, Father, that this is the moment and this is the season where things are springing forth speedily, Father. Speedy mi mi miraculous uh, miracles, speedy answers to prayers, speedy, speedy, speedy intervention from heaven in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, that your children are going to celebrate, Lord, one after and one another and when, the, when the miracles are springing forth, when prayers are being answered, Lord, tonight. I thank you for an anointing, Lord, to shift people tonight, an anointing, Father, to cause prayers to come forth and answers to prayers, long outstanding prayers, that, uh, that answers will come speedily and quickly and, sh and swiftly tonight in the Spirit. So, Father, we just release that anointing. We cover the airwaves with the blood of Jesus. We cover the links on Zoom. We cover the, the, the airwaves and the, and the links into people's houses with the blood of Jesus. I thank you right now, Lord, that we can release angels from this ministry to go to people tonight and to wherever they need help, wherever they are desperate for you, that the angels will be tonight be deployed on your behalf in your area of need. We ask, Lord, that your angels will stand ready and as the prayers goes out, as we minister, as we pray, and you pray with us in your homes and you connect your faith with what God is doing, may the angels be released on your behalf to be able to perform miracles and the purposes of heaven for this meeting tonight in the name of Jesus. Father, we just honor you. I thank you, Holy Spirit, for your power. I thank you, Lord, that you're such an amazing Father, such an amazing Father, Lord. And Lord, we just thank you for what you're going to do tonight. I thank you for the mighty testimonies that's going to spring forth after this service in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Kristen, you have a word to share? Um, in worship, I saw a golden like wedding ring or like a wedding band. And um, I felt God told me these tell me these words that my faithfulness still stands. And how I felt God said that some of um, you guys watching over Zoom might feel like there's promises God has given you, covenant, almost like a like a marriage agreement, like a like an agreement um, made between you and God about certain like promises, prophetic words, um, callings, hearts, desires, and how I felt like some of the people over Zoom just feel like they just like it's gone and that God wasn't almost faithful to it but God's saying it's not true I've always been faithful I'm standing there he is almost like see this promise he's made to you like a wedding band like a wedding ring like a covenant and God says my covenant with you still stands stand strong my faithfulness will endure and you will see the promise of what I have given you no, it doesn't matter how many years doesn't matter if it's even a word I just gave you right now I will I, I will personally see my promise come true because I have given it to you personally so far Father, I just decree and declare today that each person, Father, that ha which has a heart's desire, prophetic word that they felt like is not coming to pass or, or, or almost like as if it has died. I decree and declare that it will come alive again, that a hope will fill them in Jesus' mighty name. I decree and declare, Father, that your faithfulness will shine through in every area, Father, of people's lives and promises, Father, and that your faithfulness, Father, and I ask even, Father, Father, you will show them even through dreams or even through prophetic words or if through any way or source, Father, just remind them of your faithfulness in the Father and that you have breakthrough around the corner for them in Jesus' mighty amen. name. Amen, amen and amen. That's a good word. I want to say to you, God is faithful. He never forgets when He makes a covenant to you. And uh, God is faithful to deliver. Marisa, what has the Lord put on your heart? As I was praying for the service, I just heard heal the land and i was asking the lord what what do you want to say to us and he said as i was with joshua i gave joshua the word after moses passed away and he said i will give you every place where you put your foot and he said psalm 24 the earth is the lord and the fullness thereof and everything that dwelleth in it is mine so the lord said 
the earth is mine. Today, if we look at the circumstances, it feels like the earth belongs to Satan. But God's reminding us, the earth belongs to me. And we need to heal the land. And I was asking the Lord, what does he mean about healing the land? And he said, today there's so much going on with the lockdown and the situation. People losing hope. But we need, God is looking for us, for godly leaders, for men and women of God that will heal the land. And how do we heal the land? Currently, if we look, there's, there's no fruit producing currently if we look in the spirit. But there's thorns and thistles. And the Lord said, that is why I had a crown on my head with thorns and with thistles. And because God broke the curse that are already. And we as, as godly people, we need to renew our mind. That is how we're going to heal the land. And God is saying, we need to start with ourselves. Take off from the circumstances your eyes put it on God and that is how you're going to heal the land and that is how why the the crown that Jesus had was on his on his mind was on his head so that we can that curse is already been broken and it is so amazing for me and I'm sure many of you know that even the corona the name is crown because it's a false crown that the enemy wanted to raise in this time but God's crown already broke the curse and we need to heal the land and we need to start with each one of us by healing ourselves and getting ourselves our, our eyes off our circumstances then we can go out and heal the church and heal the city and heal the nations and that is how we're going to conquer in Jesus name that's so amazing, Marisa, because Romans 12 says that, um, that God will heal the land, but we need to repent, and repentance is to change the way you think. And changing the way you think, everything around you will change, and God wants us to change the way we think. Yes, um, Marisa, God has given us so much promises, and we are holding on for dear life, but instead we feel that we are in this um, tornadoes and this turmoil all over every time every, we don't get out of this turmoil out of these situations um, and it's just getting worse and worse instead we've got these promises we're holding on for dear life but God said instead of just going in this whirlwind of these tornadoes we must come into the middle of the storm in the eye of the storm where there's quietness what Jesus did he was sleeping in a storm he was be able to sleep in the middle of the storm in quietness and then you get revelation from God because if you can sleep in the storm you can overcome the storm and as you see Elijah what Eli Elijah did when he went to uh, Mount Horeb the Lord wasn't in the, the earthquake in the fire and the storm but he's in the stillness and what did he do he put his mantle over his head and he went to in, in the position himself and he could hear from God the next step and we must come to that next step where we can be, be quiet and hear what God is saying to receive and to uh, take all of our promises. Yeah, it's true. If you're in turmoil, you can't hear from the Holy Spirit. If you're in turmoil on the inside in your soul area, you can't hear from the Holy Spirit. So God wants us to quiet down, retract into that quiet place, into that quiet place with Him. Make time for Him so that you can become still on your inside. You can hear the still, small voice of God in the midst of the clutter. And um, God wants to speak to us, but we have to make time to, to be still and to quieten our turmoil on our insides. That is so crucial. Otherwise, we can't hear God. This is so amazing. Thanks, Kari. Are you going to just share something? Yes. Um, I really feel that the enemy has come with an attack on God's children to bring forth a spirit of frustration, to cause people to feel so frustrated with with where they are at the moment. And I felt the Lord was saying, don't allow the enemy's trap of frustration to cause you not to hear what is the next move. So it's very interesting to me when, when I heard this word that you just gave about um, if God wants to reveal the next step, because I believe that the enemy wants to use frustration to stop us from entering into what we are supposed to do. He's using frustration, but the Lord is saying, I'm going to break the power of frustration. I'm going to break the power of frustration and use the, that frustration, that situation that caused the frustration in your life. I'm going to use that as a key to give you revelation because your place of frustration will be the very key that will show you where's the revelation 
in order to progress. And the Lord said, currently in South Africa, such a lot of people, and I actually believe it's globally, such a lot of people are feeling frustrated. I've heard people are frustrated with their work situation, with their bosses. People are frustrated with the financial situation. People are frustrated with their spouses and their partners. And there's a general feeling of frustration. And just to add the cherry on the top, the, the enemy just so caused things to work in a way that we just know that we just all heard the news about a lockdown in level four. And as if we didn't have enough frustration in our personal lives, I feel this thing escalated, the frustration escalated to a national level where we started feeling it in our nation because if, it's, if it wasn't enough that we were dealing in our nation with the corruption and the frustration of the corruption, it's also with ESCOM and the electricity and the power failure, it added to the frustration and now to have a lockdown, it even caused more frustration and the Lord says, don't allow the enemy to trap you with the power of frustration but the Lord says I'm going to break the power of frustration over your life because you know what if you allow your heart to open up to this spirit of frustration this spirit will bring alongside with it a spirit called anger and rebellion and you will start rebelling against people you start uh, responding in anger and the Lord says be careful because frustration in itself is not an issue that's not the issue it's what it actually causes you to do that will open up the door for the enemy to get you to a place where you feel so entangled that you feel frustrated and then we fall into the trap of sinning and the Lord says be careful don't get entrapped in this trap of frustration because the enemy wants to cause us to become so frustrated that we cannot discern what it is that the Holy Spirit is saying to us in this moment because we will start feeling stuck because of the emotional stuff and the emotional turmoil on our inside. And you know what? It actually reminds me of a story in Luke 5. You all know this story when Simon Peter was fishing all night and he came back and he didn't catch one fish, nothing. The boats were empty. And he was probably very frustrated, you know, spending the whole night being hungry, wet, bloodshot eyes, and just feeling frustrated. Come on, let's just be honest with one another. Who will not be frustrated if you went out into the sea the whole night and you came back and that which is your provision, there was nothing. And he probably was frustrated. And the reason why I say this is because when he came back, he washed his nets and he was just done. And that's when Jesus called him and said, excuse me, Peter, just come back here. I want to ask you something. I want you to take those nets that you are busy washing. Take them and put them on the other side of the boat and go into the sea and drop them on the opposite side where you drop them. And the Bible said, that Peter answered him and Peter said, Master, we fished the whole night. And the Bible said in brackets, and very exhausted, he said, and we didn't get anything. Now to me, that exhaustion means really frustrated because really Jesus, we were there the whole night. Serious, I'm a professional fisher. You're a preacher and a teacher. I'm a professional fisherman. If there's fish to be caught, I've been doing this my whole life. At, at night time, definitely not in the day. And the reason why I say I know, according to Kari, my version of the Bible is he must have been frustrated because the Bible said that he answered. He actually said, but Jesus, seriously, we just did that the whole night through. And the Lord said to him, I know, but change the strategy and go back in but the Lord knew that he was at a point of frustration and the Lord wanted to use this place of frustration to bring forth a revelation to him and the Lord said to him no 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 go back and he said all right just Jesus because it's you I will go back just on account of your word but you know what Jesus had to wait until he came back that night feeling already frustrated, feeling irritated. And I know he must have been irritated because it was the same 
the same Peter that cut off the soldier's ear in Gethsemane. It's the same guy. So that tells me that he had a bit of an issue with anger and frustration already. So that tells me that he was frustrated. I can tell you. But Jesus had to wait for that minute and that moment. Why? Because Jesus wanted to use his place of frustration to bring forth a revelation. And what's the revelation? The revelation is from the moment that he actually met Jesus, he was exposed to Jesus. And he literally went with Jesus and he saw all the miracles Jesus did. And he saw that Jesus was the healer. Jesus introduced himself as the healer because many people got healed and set free. And I want to say to you, it was at that point that the Lord said, but now I want to reveal myself in your point of frustration, not only as the healer anymore, but as the one that will become your provider. That's why I'm sending you back with this, to the same place, but I'm changing the strategy for this reason. I've been Rafa, Jehovah Rafa to you, but now I want to be Jehovah Jireh to you. Because as you know, not catching any fish, it means that they didn't have any money, which means that they actually didn't have any fish to sell. So they didn't have any money and the Lord wanted to show him that I can give you double and I want to show up in your life as Jehovah, your Jireh, the one that will provide. That's why the Lord said, go back, do exactly what you've done. But change the strategy and I will show you in that place where you were frustrated. I'm going to give you a key that will unlock something that will give you progress into the new. And I want to say to you, I don't know what your place of frustration is, but the Lord is saying tonight, I want to break into your place of frustration to give you a key of revelation how to progress. And this actually reminds me that I have got pastors, friends in Johannesburg and about two months ago they contacted me and they were really at a place of so much frustration and they said to me Prophet Kari and they call my husband Apostle Antony we really are desperate and we've done everything nothing works nothing we are in a place of frustration we think we should give up our ministry and both myself and Anton said, this is not the time to give up. We know you are feeling down. We know you've tried everything. We know you've prayed, but God is saying, I'm going to give you a strategy. And the Lord said to them, and I felt the Lord said to them, I want you to go and pray for two weeks, but you're going to change the strategy. You're going to pray from 12 at night till 2 in the morning for the next two weeks. This is what I really felt the instruction of the Lord was for them. And on this Sunday, they phoned me. And I don't know, I got phone calls from the both of them, the husband and the wife. They said, Kari, you will not believe this. After we followed your instruction, we were so frustrated. We thought, Lord, we've prayed, we fasted, nothing worked. But we decided we're going to give it one more chance. And we're going to do what you said we should do. And we started praying at night from 12 to 2, every night for two weeks. On Friday morning, they had someone randomly phoning them saying the Lord told them that they need to buy new equipment for the church. The Saturday, someone phoned and said, we want to give you provision and we feel that we need to pay you a salary until the end of December. Someone else phoned and said, we feel that we need to make a contribution personal contribution that will really sustain them for the rest of the year. And I want to say to you, it was at the point of frustration that the Lord said, I want you to go back and do exactly what you've done, but I'm going to give you a strategy. And then in that strategy, the Lord released revelation and through the revelation, the breakthrough come. And I want to say to you, if the Lord can do it for them, if the Lord can do it for Peter when he was at a place of frustration where he was fishing the whole night and it didn't work and the Lord said go back do it again just change the strategy I want to say to you I don't know what it is that you are frustrated with but the Lord says I want to deal with the frustration so that I can break in and give you the revelation that you need in order to progress to the place that I have for you God says now is the time where I want to do miracles for you but you cannot partner with frustration so will you just come and let's just close our eyes
And we're going to ask the Holy Spirit to break in and break the power of frustration that has tried to keep you in a place of frustration. Jesus, tonight we want to come and I lift up every person that can hear the sound of my voice. And from this place, I release angels into every household where the enemy has come with frustration after frustration, financial frustrations, emotional frustrations, relationships frustrations. Lord, tonight, by the legal blood of Jesus, I want to cancel, cancel every assignment of darkness to use frustration to get people entangled, to get stuck where you don't want them to get stuck. So tonight, Jesus, I break the power of frustration over people's lives and I release them, Father. I release them from the place of frustration and I pray that this frustration will become the key that will give them the revelation of what they need to do in order to get where you need them to be. And we just thank you for this in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Amen. Over to you, Anton. That an amazing, encouraging word. I hope that encouraged you as well. Uh, we are praying on this side for you, and I want to share sh uh, a short word, and then we're going to prophesy over people on Zoom. So please tune in and connect your faith to, to what, with what the Lord is doing in the session. And um, just for my side, I'm so excited to be with you tonight. The word of the Lord can't be stopped. And um, it, as it's going through the airwaves tonight, I just prophesy over you that it will break open a pathway for you. There will be an impartation in the spiritual realm in, into, your, into your life, into your soul, into your spirit, man, tonight. An impartation that will ignite something new, ignite something fresh, ignite a new fire and new faith in you. In the name of Jesus. I'm so excited to be here with you tonight. It's a powerful season and God is on the move. I'm going to say God is on the move. Don't key of the Lord said to me, don't key of the natural. Just don't key of the natural because I'm moving radically in the spiritual realm. I'm on the move in your, in, in, in your life. And we all, we all are sitting and saying, Lord, the word of God says that we, we do not look with our natural eyes, but we need to see with our spiritual eyes. And if we know that God is a God that is a God of an advancing kingdom, you know that God will always advance things in your life. And there comes a season where God is moving rapidly in your life. And I feel it's a corporate season over the body of Christ. And the Lord was saying to me today, don't stop praying. Don't stop praying. Don't stop praying. And the Lord was reminding me that there's, a, there's, a, there's warnings for us in this season because a lot of people are getting breakthrough. But um, your set time might just be next month or your set time might be at the end of the year. We don't know what, what your set time, when your set time is. God is only requiring from you to push. All you need to, all you need to do is to push. When, when a lady wants to give birth, there's a point of no return where the doctor just tells her, honey, push, push, and there's no turning back. You have to push. But if I did it, but anyway, I was there and my kids got born. And there's a point of no return. You just have to push in prayer. You don't, you can't do anything else, but it's, it's, it's at the point of no return. I feel the Lord is just saying there's a warning in this very, very important time where God is on the move in the spirit. Very volatile time, very strategic time in your life where the Lord is saying, don't allow yourself to be disconnected from God in this time of waiting. If you're still in that, that waiting for that promise and for that big thing to happen, don't disconnect from God in the waiting. This is crucial because when we disconnect from God because of disappointment, because we become despondent, become disappointed, become passive. There's a numbness that comes in and our prayer life becomes dry. God says you have to cultivate and push because your prayer life and the condition of your prayer life is really, a con uh, it's really an indication of your spiritual maturity and your spiritual life and how healthy it is. So you have to pray. And God is saying, don't disconnect. The enemy wants to bring situations and emotions to you that want, to dis want you to disconnect from God. And when you're disappointed and tired, there's a disconnection many times. And God says, don't. Don't allow the enemy to get you disconnected. Don't allow setbacks at this time to shipwreck your faith. God is saying, do not allow setbacks, those curveballs that the enemy is bringing, to shipwreck your faith. This is just warnings the Lord is giving us to, to us in this season. And just saying to us that be careful. The enemy is around, walking around you like a roaring lion, checking and scanning you daily to check what weaknesses are inside of you that it can entice you to sin. Because when you sin, you go into disobedience and immediately there's a delaying um, and there's a 
diverting of, of, of uh, the speed in which God wants to bring the promises. And there's a misalignment almost because of a breach that happens. There's a breach. It's almost like your, your river is flowing and sin causes a disconnection or a block in that river. And the water da uh, dams up and it can't really flow as it should. So we shouldn't be at a place where we say, Lord, I'm in disobedience, willful disobedience. I don't care. God is saying to you, don't sin, don't be enticed, watch those weak areas. And God says, I have given you promises, and like the prophets have prophesied, when God cut the covenant with you, He never forgets that. He never forgets that, and God brings it forth in His timing and in His way. In His timing, and it is His way. And many times you think, and I had a friend that said to me, I applied for a job and I didn't get the job, and I'm so disappointed. I said, listen here, God has a way to come with a side door, to, 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 to bring that same opportunity to you again. And God, when he, when he, when he, when he opens that up, it's sometimes a better opportunity and, and there's something better that God has for you. We must always believe that, that waiting is not denial, that, that the delay is not denial. And God is always faithful. And when people are tired of waiting for the promises to manifest, they want to do things their way. And we see in the Bible how many people have shipwrecked themselves and caused an um, abortion almost of the bloodline through their own decisions and their own plans because they want to help God. We want to help God and say, Lord, I can't wait. Let me do this for you. And we can see it with Abram, with Hagar, how he tried to force the promise into his own mold. And we saw that with Jacob. He tried to steal the blessing and God had a different way for him to give it to him. So God wants us to co-labor with him in prayer. Co-laboring with God, you don't have to do it alone. God says, maybe some of you feel alone tonight. Maybe you feel... Uh, forgotten maybe you feel forgotten in a place of restriction almost like in a jail an emotional jail a financial jail and you say but everybody has forgotten about me there's nobody for me and i want to say to you god has not forgotten about you he is mindful of you he will never leave you not forsake you and he is with you he's your covenant partner and the lord is saying i want you to co-labor with me you don't have to do it alone i'm always there by your side and I want you to pray, and I want you to be obedient. That's how you co-labor with me, by, by prayer, by being obedient, by, by patiently enduring with your faith until that set time comes and the Lord releases it in the name of Jesus. And nothing will happen in your life until you push in prayer. This multiplication will only happen in your life. Increase will only happen in your life if you push in prayer. Prayer is really that power source that generates the anointing on your prayer altar, that to release that dunamis power to shift things in the spirit. That is what prayer is. Prayer is that, that, that power, that power source that generates the anointing on your prayer altar. Your prayer altar needs to release power. It's like a, it's like a conduit. You know, it's like it needs to generate dunamis power into your life. And if you don't pray, there's no fire on your altar and there's no power. And God needs you to co-labor with Him to pray constantly and push and stop being lazy because prayer is the medium to birth things in your life, through which life, things in your life are getting birthed. That's the only way you can do it. God gave you promises through His Word, through His prophets. And many times the seed in that, in that prophecy is, is there. But you need to push and you need to pray and you need to speak life over that seed. And as you push and pray, you come to a season where you are pregnant with that Word and you, are, you come to a place where many are now that, that, that are in the process to birth, giving birth to what God has, has given them. And you know, a, 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 when a woman conceives, there's a nine month um, you know, season where the baby grows and then there's a birthing time. So in the spirit, that could maybe take a long time. But the Lord gives us a promise for this season in Isaiah 66, 9. And he says, shall I bring to the moment of birth and not give delivery, says the Lord. Lord says, I will not bring you to the moment of birth, of that business idea, of that promise, of, of whatever needs to be birthed, the new in your life. I will not bring that moment and, del and not give delivery. I'm a faithful God. That same scripture says, or shall I who gives deliver delivery shut the womb? God says, you're already in that process. I promise you in Isaiah 66, 9, I will not shut your womb. I will not stop the delivery. I will not, I will not, I will not. And the Lord is saying that, that prayer is so important. And, and every prayer that you have prayed, even in the last season and the previous season, goes into a prayer bank. And that's why the Lord says, remind me of my promises. Let, 
Not because God forgets, but He wants you to pray. So when you pray, you, 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 you pray the promises of God back to Him. And when you pray that to Him, there's creative power that's being released through your words. And those prayers are going into a prayer bank. Those, those, those whole prayer banks are, are becoming full of your prayers and the power of, of your prayers. And your prayers are becoming, and the Lord wants us to pray because your prayers are mediums of, mediums of divine summonses. You know what a summons is? It's a divine decree. It's, a, it's like a divine summons. It puts a demand on heaven to respond or to deliver. And when you pray radical prayers, God says, I want you to push in prayer because your prayer will activate the seed for breakthrough that was locked up in that promise and in the prof prophecies that I've given you. And we see in Revelations 5, 5, 8, that the Bible says in Revelations 5, 8, the prayers of the saints is filling the golden bowls of intercession until it tips over. Some of you got huge bowls. Can you imagine all your prayers that's in that bowl? Some of you, those bowls are about to tip. And the God says, when that bowl tip, it is your set time. There's the tipping that happens. So none of your prayers goes to waste. It goes into a prayer bank. It goes into those bowls. And when that bowl is full, there's no stopping. It tips. It tips. And I decree and declare over you tonight that your bowls are tipping in the season. I prophesy even tonight, as you pray one more prayer, as you make one more decree, that the bowls are tipping in the name of Jesus. Because that is what the Word says. When the, it's a tipping point, it's a tipping season, I prophesy that those bowls are tipping on your behalf and it's being poured out. The promises of God is being poured out over you in the name of Jesus. And you know, it's so amazing that prayer is, is, is just such a medium that never goes to waste because people can die, but their prayers never die. You might have had family members that prayed for you, grandmothers and grandfathers, and the Lord is actually doing an amazing thing in this season. He is busy with what we call the synergy of the ages. He is busy linking your prayers with generational prayers in your bloodline so that He can have a whole arsenal of power and dunamis power through these prayers so that He can give you breakthrough. Isn't that amazing? Because... Be, you know, people leave an inheritance to their children, but you know, many people pray and the best inheritance you can leave for your children is prayer. Prayer goes into that prayer bank and God pulls on those prayers of the grandmothers and grandfathers and aunts and uncles, whoever prayed for you. And many people have been born again or have been um, saved from sudden death because of God being able to pull on the prayers of the generations and says, at least I've got something to work with to, um, to pull this person out of the clutches of death. And it doesn't matter if your family or your grandmother or grandfather have prayed religious prayers and you think, oh my goodness, I don't think the Lord answered those prayers that she prayed next to the bed, you know, on her knees. But the Lord says, I honor all the prayers that, was, that went up to me, even if it was religious prayers in your mind. And God honors everything, everything, everything. And you know, Isaiah 62 says in verse 6 and 7, we must be watchmen we must be watchmen on the walls of our own life. We must guard that. And this scripture in Isaiah 62, 6 and 7 says, verse 6 says, we must never keep silent day or night. It says, that's me. It says, you who profess the Lord, that's us. Take no rest for yourself. Take no rest from prayer. Verse 7 says, and give him, God, no rest from your prayers. Wear God out. God says, I invite you. Wear me out. I can't be worn out that easily. Give me no rest with your prayers until Jerusalem is established. And that's a prophetic sign of your destiny or your future that is going to be established. So God says in the scripture, don't give me, don't give me any rest. Pound heaven with your prayers. Be like the pers persistent widow. Remind God constantly of the promises of God. Remember, our weapons are not carnal, but they are spiritual weapons. And as you pray the word, as you pray those covenants, as you pray those prophetic promises back to God, as you pray the scriptures, which is quite easy, the Bible says in Psalm 103.20, the angels hearken or they obey the voice of the word of God. So this is a spiritual protocol. The scriptures cannot be broken, the Bible says. So as you read the scripture, Psalm 35 says, God, you delight in my prosperity. So, Lord, I ask you for supernatural provision. I ask you to help me in this area because your word says you delight in my prosperity. And as you release that word, angels of prosperity and provision are then being deployed on your behalf to be, to be able to bring that provision to you because the Bible says they listen to the word of God and they only move on the word of God. 
they listen. They, there's a tuning in, and there's a, there's, a, there's, a, there's a divine language that they respond to. Not your moaning, not your groaning, not your complaining, not your self-pity. They, th- those noises are extension, or, or those, those sounds, and those type of worship is extension God's nostrils. But the angels hear and hearken only to the voice of God's word. And in saying that, I want to say to you that prayer is effortless in a way if it's not used in, co- in conjunction with righteousness. God says prayer and holiness, a holy lifestyle goes together. Prayer is useless or effortless in a way without righteousness. Righteousness is right standing with God. Are you in right standing with God? Are you obedient? Are you doing what He told you to do? Do you know of areas in your life where you are diso- disobedient or willfully sinning or just compromising? The Lord is saying, come back in alignment with me. Come back in right standing with me. And you'll see your prayers will become much more powerful than you've ever dreamed or imagined. And in saying that, that goes further. We should never pray if we have not forgiven others. This is crucial. This is conditions for our prayers to work. When you pray and you've got something against somebody, ask the Lord to restore your heart when you pray. I know it's sometimes difficult. But as you bring it before the Lord, the Holy Spirit is faithful to heal your heart. Maybe you've got a child that disappoints you. Maybe it's a spouse. Maybe there's somebody at work. Maybe somebody at church that have disappointed you. Ask the Lord to restore your heart from whatever happened to you and forgive those who have hurt you. Because if you don't do that, it's blocking your prayers from not only being heard, but from going up to God. So this is crucial. And unforgiveness and offense blocks the spiritual pipelines of your life where you feel I'm holding on to a grudge and unforgiveness on this side. It blocks an opportunity possibly um, in the spiritual pipelines of your life where God wants to give you breakthrough on that side because breakthrough comes through people. God uses people to give you promotions and gifts and whatever. It comes through people. That's how God designed it. So unforgiveness, offense on this side, actually brings you to a place where, where your breakthrough might be blocked on the other side. So God says it's not worth it. Let go of the bitterness. Bitterness is pretty much like the gallbladder of a chicken. Isn't that interesting? The gallbladder of a chicken is a small little item in the chicken. But my goodness, when that gallbladder bursts, guess what happened? The whole chicken gets spoiled. And this is what, if it bursts, the whole chicken is, is you can't use the meat. And God is saying it's that small the bitterness, that, that angriness, that unforgiveness, that is like that, 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 that gallbladder of the chicken. You know, when you nurse curse and rehearse it, when you lash out and you don't want to go of the, of, of the unforgiveness, it's like it spoils everything. The bitterness spoils everything. And the Bible is clear. Guard your heart for it is the wellspring of life. Guard your heart, the hurt. It is the well. Life comes forth from your heart. And we should not bring bitterness and offense into our place of prayer and the bible says forgive 70 times 70 times 70 times 7 and some people say but lord i've done more than that well continue to forgive and ask the holy spirit jesus said ask the holy spirit and bring it before god and god will shift your heart and we know that prayer is such a sacrifice anybody can teach anybody can do a sermon anybody can do this and that but to pray is a sacrifice you have to crucify the flesh It is a spiritual discipline that the Lord says, crucify your flesh, do it. Push, push and release it. Because when you pray, that incense goes up to heaven and God says, it is a pleasant um, um, fragrance in my nostrils. And many times when we are at a place where we are down and out, we are surrounded by the storms that Vilma said, and we are such a bad emotional place, then we fight with people around us. We murmur, we complain, we have self-pity and that forms a kind of worship that is a stench in God's nostrils. And God says, stop that. Because when we see in the Bible in Genesis, Abel and Cain, for example, we saw that God has respect for some people's prayers and other people's prayers God rejects because of their wrong hearts. Because remember the word says God only looks at the heart. You might say, oh, that person is this or that. And oh, they look like this from the outside. They're fat or thin or ugly or whatever they might be. But God looks at the heart. God doesn't look like us um, at, at the outside of the people, but God looks at the heart. And if your heart is not right with God, if your heart is wrong and in the wrong place, then, then that also blocks our prayers like we've seen with Cain and Abel, the intention and the motives of our heart. And I'm almost done. I want to I end off. I, I want to say Luke 18 verse 1 says, Jesus said to his disciples in Luke 18 verse 1, Pray at all times, always and 
and not and don't give up and lose heart jesus said to his disciples pray at all times all times always don't give up don't lose heart so at all times mean in and out of season when you get breakthrough you must still pray like your life depends on it and it's ne it's a necessity when jesus started his ministry when he was baptized by john the baptist in the Jordan, he immediately went into the desert for 40 days. He fasted, he prayed. He started his ministry with praying and fasting. And if Jesus started his ministry with praying and fasting, who are we not to pray and fast regularly? This is crucial. So lots of prayer, you will see, brothers and sisters, will give you a boldness and will put you in charge emotionally. Listen, the more you pray. Last night, I got up with my wife and we prayed from 12 to 1. And this morning, I just felt, wow, I just felt such a boldness inside of me. I felt such a settling anointing on my inside. I felt such a settling because just praying in tongues for an hour. And many times you have to do some things you've done bef uh, that you've never done before and do things you've never done before to, to get things you never had before. It's about, that Kari said, breaking the structure, breaking the little recipes and doing something different. Because the Bible says when you pray a lot, it will give you boldness. And the Bible says that the righteous... He's as bold as a lion. We are the righteous of God. Are we bold? Some people are not bold. They're having meltdowns. They're having pity parties. They're having, I don't know what else, but, but, but that's not boldness. When you're bold, you are confident, and that's why we have to pray. Without the altar of prayer in your life, you are just a lecturer. If you are, if you are praying and you don't have a strong prayer altar and a strong prayer life, you're just almost like a lecturer. And the Lord is saying that, when you have a strong prayer altar, that power and anointing is being released through your prayers. It gives you certain power and anointing. That when you decree a thing, it happens. Look at Elijah. Elijah decreed into the Spirit, no rain for three years. And heaven responded, and, and the heavens shut. Because he had power. When he prayed, there was power. That's because of prayer. A strong prayer life. A strong prayer altar that generated that anointing. And then he made a prophetic decree. And he says, I unlock the heavens. It needs, to be, it needs to rain. And after three years, it rained again. Wow, isn't that amazing? Do you want a prayer life like that? I want to say to you, this is amazing. Try it at home. We're all trying it. But it is a discipline and it's a sacrifice to pray. And we want to pray like Elijah. And we want to pray. And we want to pray. When we pray, the heavens uh, responds and earth responds because we are the sons and daughters of God. And we need to just do it. And there are many decrees and counter decrees from the enemy. And we have to counter decree the enemy. We need to be ahead in the spirit of the enemy. And we need to on, be on top of our game. And if you don't pray, you're not on top of your game. We say, Lord, I need to be a step ahead of the enemy. We have to enforce the word of God that God has given us. When God gives you a prophetic word or a promise, you can't just lie back on the lilo next to the pool and think God's going to do it. No. There's, there's certain stories in, in, or certain um, ministries or people in certain flows that says, well, God will put the word on the shelf. That's the wrong thing to do. God says, I have to enforce it. When there's a law in a nation that is written, once it issues, nothing happens until that, that law is enforced. We are law enforcement agents. You are the law enforcement agent of your prophetic word. And we see that in 1 Kings 18, Elijah prophesied and said, I hear the sound of the abundance of rain. And that was in the time of drought. And he was prophesying something opposite to what people were seeing in the natural. I said, I hear prophetically, it's dry. It's dry around everybody. He said, I hear the sound of the abundance of rain. And some people would say, oh, shh, shh. What are you? You're wrong. What's wrong with you? But God is giving something prophetic, and that abundance must be enforced. Who's going to do it? God's not going to do it. We need to do it. God has called us to do it. So there's, a, there's an enforcing that needs to be done. And you know, how did Elijah enforce it? He put his head between his legs. I'm not sure if I can do that now. I feel a bit stiff at this age. But some people, yeah, it says it's dangerous. You can't get up. But anyway, we trust the Holy Spirit for that anointing. And he put his head between his legs, and he prayed, and he pushed. And he said, I enforce what I saw in the spirit. I enforce the abundance. And he said to his servant Gehazi, I'm praying, I'm pushing and I'm pushing. Go and see if there's rain. And Gehazi came back six times with a discouraging report and saying, mm -mm. and he's praying. And every time he's praying and Elijah is praying and putting his head between his legs and pushing in prayer and intercession. And every time Gehazi comes back and says, nothing yet. Nothing yet. 
And many of us are the same. We pray and we pray and we pray and we pray and nothing happens. And we say, well, I've prayed. I've prayed enough. I'm not going to pray anymore. I'm tired now. I'm going to leave it now. God must just do what he wants to do. And I'm sure God will do it in his own time. No, 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 no. What needs, what God wants us to have, we need to push in prayer. We need to persevere in prayer. And we need to have a persistence in our prayer life. And we saw that after those prayers of Elijah, when he went out a seventh time, guys, he said there's a cloud as small as a man's hand. And we saw that persistence in pushing, when you couldn't see anything, brought a small cloud and there was a breaking open because what actually happened is that that, that Elijah's prayers broke through a first realm, a second realm, a third realm, a fourth realm, a fifth realm, a sixth realm, but the breakthrough was only in the seventh realm. In which realm are you at the moment? What have you prayed through? Your breakthrough might be in the seventh realm. You might be in number three now. You don't know. And God says, don't give up. Don't give up. Don't give up. Satan wants to devise strategies against you to discourage you, to stop you from praying. Okay? And all you need to do is pray. God will sort out the rest. You just need to, God will do what he has to do. You just pray and you just push. And Paul said to us, fight the good fight of faith. This is what we are doing. We are pushing because we are moving from glory to glory. So you don't know on what level you are. Elijah only came to level six and there was the breakthrough in that level because he's pushing through barriers in the spirit. And I want to encourage you today, go to your prayer closet, crucify your flesh, and pray because prayer is a sacrifice it will release the oil it will release the dunamis power to shift things over your life in a radical way not only personally but over nations and regions in jesus name and i want us to i want to i want us to take up our offering and i want to car i just put those banking details on the screen i want you to sow a seed tonight a radical seed you we're not here in person uh, we can't take up our offering but i want to encourage you to sow a seed tonight into this word, into what God wants to do, into the impartation that we, have, we are releasing over the airways. And that God will really take you to a new level of prayer. That a mantle of intercession will come upon you and be ignited upon you. Because when you are praying, when you are a prayer warrior, when you are the watchman on the walls of your life, there is a supernatural transfer that happens. There's a supernatural power that's being released in the spirit on your behalf. And the enemy would love to stop us and block us from praying. So I just want to thank I just want to thank every one of you. Just as you sow now, just ask the Lord. And I want to pray that as you sow right now, Father, whatever is being sowed now, whatever people has put on their hearts, Father, felt on their hearts to sow. I ask, Lord, when, when the seed comes onto this prayer altar, Lord, there shall be a supernatural transfer in the spirit. I release the power of intercession. I release a spirit of prayer upon your people. I ignite and I release by impartation a mantle for intercession upon the shoulders of the people watching. In the name of Jesus, I break over you all in discouragement, all passiveness, all despondency. In the name of Jesus, every heaviness I break off you. In the name of Jesus, where the enemy has tried to disconnect you, has tried to bring delay, I just break the power of delay. I just just break the power of delay. I thank you, Lord Jesus, that you said that the righteous may fall seven times, but we need to get up every time and move with you. So I thank you, Father, for the power of the Holy Spirit right now. Right now, Lord, as they sow that there shall be an impartation, an ignition of the generational mantles for prayer. A new flame to be ignited, Lord, on their prayer altars, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen and amen. Amen and amen. Is there something you want to share? Amen. Come. I just feel like this, I don't know for who the word is, uh, maybe it's for all of us, um, but I just see someone that's on a potter's wheel, and you just feel um, the Lord's just busy with you, busy with you, and it's a never-ending story. So I just want to tell you tonight, God does not make mistakes. He knows what He's doing. Even if the season feels very long for you, just hold on to that, because God is doing a finishing work in you and he will fulfill what they have started in you amen um inga um i have a word for you uh, yes yeah, also is inga <laughs> um 
And I felt just God highlights me two areas. I first felt God said that he's um, coming through for you in your area of work and the place where you work. I felt like you almost was, almost all like trusting for God for something in the area where you work or even in career wise. And I felt God said he's bringing you favor there and even to your um uh, bosses or even people over you he, he's bringing favor towards you and i'm also um i felt like there's something almost heavy weighing on your heart like you have a, like a heart's desire or something you're really trusting it and like praying god for and god's saying that he's meeting that and that has also been on his heart as much as as much as it has been on yours and i felt just god say these words your faithfulness will not only bring this to pass but it will also accelerate it and i felt like god just really really wants you to take almost like both hands with him and how God really wants to show you his faithfulness in this area to the fullness. And I decree and declare that over you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Anadia, Jan, so from feeling I've got a word for you. I just feel the Lord is saying, do not think that deliverance will not come. I, I am the God that will bring the deliverance. And surely... I will, I will bring you out of this affliction that you are, uh, house of affliction that you are uh, currently um, finding yourself in. And the Lord is saying, you feel that you are on the wrong path. That the Lord is saying, you are not on the wrong path. And circumstances may not be the way that you think it is and it is gone, gone sour, but I am working in that specific circumstance. Even the relationships that you cherished, the Lord is saying that... Um, I will bring, I will restore those relationships that you are trusting me. And the Lord is saying the end is near. Just trust me. The end is near. I am the God that will deliver you from this affliction. And the Lord is saying, don't think that that you are you are alone. And 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 the and the cries. I heard your cries, and I will deliver you in this season. Just be faithful, like you've been trusting me in the past. Trust me now and you will not be disappointed in Jesus' name. And then I've also got a word for, for Warren. I feel the Lord is saying he's bringing a new sound to you. And it's a different sound. It is a sound of laughter and it is a sound of joy. And the Lord is saying, I see just written over your life, at last. The Lord said, at last. And he is also calling you to be more intimate with him and to be closer to him. And as Anton was, was talking about the praying, I just felt the Lord is saying, as you pray more and you, and you become closer to him, he will bring you in a, in a way that you will feel that you will. he's also calling you to stand up in the spirit. And he's calling you to be a sonship. He say, I'm calling you in, is, as an entitlement, accept the entitlement of sonship. On your life, on your life, in Jesus' name, and you will, you will testify of the goodness of God over your life, in Jesus' name. Warren and Jennifer, I also have a word for you. Uh, Marisa didn't know that I have a word for you as well. And Warren, I really saw an arrow of the enemy coming against you. And the Lord said that we need to stop and block the arrow. And this is the arrow of discouragement to try to stop that which the Lord is busy moving and doing in the realm of the Spirit. And I felt that the enemy wants to shoot this arrow to discourage you to say that something is wrong. The Lord is saying, I'm sending angels out to you and to the shop and God is saying nothing will happen to the transaction. God is saying I'm putting the blood of Jesus over that transaction and this arrow. I pull that arrow out in the spirit and I say return to sender. And that which the enemy wants to do to cause this deal to abort, the Lord says it shall not abort. But God says this is not the time to become despondent. The enemy is trying everything in his might to bring forth a demonic delay and to discourage the two of you. The Lord said I've given you a word. I've given you and Jennifer a private word in the uh, uh, between the two of you and God says I've not forgotten about that word God says I need to remind you that I, that the Lord said that there will be a season where you will shift from Harry Smith to Cape Town God says now is the time and that's why there's
there's been a contention in the spirit because the enemy wants you to walk with your tail between your legs. But God says this is the season where the both of you will dance without music. This is the season that the both of you will stand victoriously to say to those around you that's been pointing their fingers at you to say, look, this is what the Lord has done for us. And God says you don't budge on the price. God says you don't stay back. But the Lord says now is the time to push even more in prayer. So from this place, both me and Anton, all of us at Kingdom GPS are standing with the two of you. And we say no weapon that is formed against you shall prosper in the name of Jesus Christ. And we cancel the satanic attack on the sale of the of this business and we declare it shall be sold and in this place you will come and you will give your testimony so we just give all the honor and the glory to the lord for that in jesus name and on over to you wow wasn't that an awesome session that's all we have time for for tonight i hope the word blessed you the word bless you may it bear mighty fruit in your life may there be a supernatural impartation in your spirit man and when you go to bed tonight, may there be an excitement on the inside of you to know what God is going to do for you, an excitement to pray. Many of you have possibly said, I am going to pray. From tonight, I'm going to stop my laziness, and I'm going to exercise that spiritual muscles to pray. And you'll see God do supernatural, accelerated miracles for you in Jesus' name. Be blessed. Have a good evening, and thank you for tuning in. We love you all so much in Jesus' name. Bye-bye.